Hello creepy friends, and welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be doing my February reading wrap-up. In the voiceover, you'll be hearing a short review of all the books I read in February, and the visual will be of me completing all my February reading journal pages. If you'd like to see the initial setup of these February spreads, check out my February reading journal setup video. I'll link it up in the card and down in the description. Apologies if you can hear any shuffling or clonking in the background of the audio. If you hear anything, those are my dogs. As always, any materials that I'm using in my journal are listed in the description below, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Before we dive into the reviews, we're going to real quickly go over my February reading statistics. I read 11 books for a total of 3,743 pages and I read 27 out of the 29 days in February. Looking at the authors, five out of the 11 books were written by a person of color, and the author countries were seven from the US, two from the UK, one from Nigeria, and one from Botswana. My average rating for February was 4.1, so I had a really good reading month. My top genres were sci-fi, horror, fantasy, and dystopian. And my top moods were dark, challenging, adventurous, tense, and reflective. And all these stats are from my Storygraph app, so if you would like to follow me on Storygraph or on Goodreads, those links are in the description. And now let's move on to the reviews. The Mysterious Case of the Alperton Angels by Janice Hallett. Unfortunately, this was my least favorite book that I read this month. Like the author's previous works, this is a mystery told in a found footage style, which I really do enjoy. I really love the first two novels from Janice Hallett, but I like this one less. The author made a case in this book for avoiding obsession and not getting sucked into a quest for revenge. However, I didn't find the characters or the plot as compelling as her previous work. I usually enjoy a cult story, but this time it didn't save it for me. Hallett is a genuinely good author, so others may enjoy this more than I did, as long as the convoluted plot doesn't bother them. However, I would more highly recommend the author's previous work rather than this one. My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinkin Braithwaite This book is set in Lagos, Nigeria and our main character is a nurse whose sister always seems to kill the men that she dates. Our main character, Korode, always seems to get roped into helping her little sister, Ayola, clean up her messes. Trouble ensues when Ayola starts dating a doctor Korode is pining after at the hospital, and when Korode's coma patient, who she's been confiding in and telling all her secrets, wakes up. This is a short and darkly funny book and highlights the bonds of sisters. It was well written and the characters were believable and relatable. However, I did get a little bit bored throughout the middle. I think this is a book that was a little miscategorized as a lot of places list it as a thriller. I wouldn't consider this to be a thriller. It's more of a story about family bonds and what you'll do for the ones that you love. Overall, it was a good read and I really enjoyed the characters, especially Corriday. A Night in the Lonesome October by Roger Zelazny. This is a fun fantasy and horror novel set from the point of view of a dog who is something like a familiar, along with other various animals. Their human partners play a game where one side tries to release the Elder Gods into the world and the other tries to keep the path closed. The story was fun and the characters were lovable. There was also a lot of humor in the book. I think it could qualify as cozy horror or mystery. I was engaged in the story because of the characters, but the plot was, unfortunately for me, a little bit forgettable. However, I still had a good time while I was reading it, and I would still recommend it to people who enjoy stories with magic and quirky characters, as well as quirky humor. Womb City by Tlotlo Tsamase. This was an ARC review, and the publication date is January 23rd, 2024. Read this if you're looking for an Afrofuturism and horror tale set in Botswana by a Matswana author. Themes of misogyny, colonialism, bodily autonomy, and wealth inequality 
murderous ghosts, consciousness transfer between bodies, a vengeful god, and a good-for-her ending. This is the author's debut novel. It's set in a near-future Botswana where people can purchase a new body for their consciousness to be transferred into after their current lifetime runs its course. However, people do not retain the memories of their previous lifetime. Additionally, some people, oftentimes criminals, but also many women, have a microchip inserted into their nervous system that monitors them at all times and reports any possible crime or infraction they may commit. Our main character, Nella, is chipped and being monitored by her police officer husband, all the while attempting to conceal an affair with a wealthy businessman. While Nella and her lover commit an accidental crime, it sets off a dark series of events, uncovering corruption, nepotism, and nefarious plots, as well as setting a murderous ghost on their trail. This book is very hard to define or describe without giving spoilers. It's a genre mashup that includes sci-fi, speculative and dystopian fiction, Afrofuturism, fantasy, and horror. The writing really reminded me of Rosewater by Todd A. Thompson, which I loved, being eerie and unsettling, yet un yet engrossing. Samase is incredibly creative, bringing in so many new ideas and weaving them together with socio-political issues, including misogyny, colonialism, racism, surveillance by the government, bodily autonomy, and wealth inequality. This is where my main criticism comes in. There was so much going on that sometimes it was confusing or felt convoluted, particularly in the middle third of the book. However, Samase pulled all the strings together by the end with a satisfying ending. I also felt that the audiobook narrator, Christelle Mutombo, did a great job. Although your mileage may vary, I had a great time with this book, and I would recommend it for readers who enjoy dystopian and speculative fiction and other Afrofuturistic stories like those from Tade Thompson or Nnedi Okorafor. Let Us Believe in the Beginning of the Cold Season by Farouk Farahzad. This is a little bit out of my comfort zone, as it's a poetry collection, and I don't usually read poetry. But this was an amazing collection from one of Iran's most famous modern poets. The poems are stunningly beautiful and heartbreaking, with themes of grief, depression, regret, and bitterness, as well as some political critiques of Iran in the 1950s and 1960s. She seems to be a woman who was not allowed to fully flourish during her lifetime, and she tragically died at age 32 from a car crash. Her poems have an eroticism that was not proper for a woman to write about at that time. I am reminded of the sorrow of Emily Dickinson, or Edna St. Vincent Millay, combined with the expansiveness of Walt Whitman, to give a more American reference. I would definitely recommend this to anybody who enjoys sad girl poetry. We Cast a Shadow by Maurice Carlos Ruffin Read this if you're looking for a speculative novel set in a near-future American dystopia with some satirical humor, a pointed look at structural racism, colorism, and wealth inequality, a complicated and sometimes unlikable main character, a heartbreaking portrayal of missteps made by a parent who wants the best for their child, and amazing narration on the audiobook. This book was so thought-provoking and I really loved it. It's set in a near future in the American South, seemingly Louisiana. Structural racism has gotten even worse in America, and people of color, those who can afford it, are paying for me medical procedures to make them look white. Our main character desperately wants to rise in the law firm he works for in order to pay for this procedure for his son. However, his single-mindedness and internalized racism cause him to act in ways that cause so much harm to his family and himself. With satirical humor and witty writing, this book calls out so many deep-seated issues and insecurities, and hammers home the destructiveness of structural racism in America. Although it's sometimes difficult to be in the head of the main character, this book was so powerful and I loved it. I highly recommend it. The Women Could Fly by Megan Giddings Read this if you're looking for a world similar to our own but magic exists. An America that has turned more fascistic and the government heavily monitors women for signs of witchiness. A black queer woman main character. Strong themes of misogyny and racism. A story that explores generational trauma and seeing your parents as flawed humans. And a good for her ending. I thought this book was so good. The main character, Jo, felt so relatable to me and the troubles she goes through in this book are things a lot of us have experienced. 
America is similar to our own, except witches and magic are real. Women must be closely monitored by a man in their life, and if they do not marry by the age of 30, they become sort of wards of the state. There is a fear in society of women turning into witches if they have freedom and are allowed to think for themselves. Joe's mother disappeared when she was young. Many years later, when Joe's mother is finally declared dead, her will is read and Joe is given a strange task, to go to a mysterious island in Lake Superior on a very specific date. As she learns more about her mother and magic, she comes into her own power. Eventually, she must defend herself against all the oppression of society. My favorite quote from The Women Could Fly is, anything can make sense to a person as long as it helps them feel powerful. Artificial Condition, Rogue Protocol, and Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. These are books two, three, and four of the Murderbot Diaries. These are all rereads for me, and this is one of my favorite sci-fi series of all time. I wanted to refresh my memory and reread the series before I read the newest book, System Collapse. This series follows Murderbot, a sentient humanoid construct whose function is security. Murderbot is owned by a large corporation and is contracted out to whomever needs extra security for a variety of different missions. The whole series focuses quite a bit on corporate espionage and examines the dark sides of capitalism and what it means to be a person who is individual and autonomous. Murderbot, unbeknownst to its owners, hacks itself so that it can no longer be controlled and goes on a journey of self-discovery, experiencing relationships with humans and AI entities, as well as learning about human emotions and experiences through obsessive binge-watching of media. Murderbot gets into a lot of tight situations throughout the series, and there are a lot of fun action scenes. It's such a great character, and Murderbot's snarky and sarcastic remarks are hilarious and endearing. It also touches my heart whenever Murderbot quote-unquote experiences an emotion when interacting with its found family. Although I don't have time to go into the plots of all the different books right now, I would very highly recommend this series to anyone who loves sci-fi and those who don't usually read sci-fi but are looking for an easy, humorous, and fun way to start. The Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley Check this out if you're looking for sci-fi with amazing world building and an all-female cast, living planet ships that are slowly dying and trapped in place around an artificial star, weird symbiosis between the worlds and inhabitants where the women birth the things needed to sustain the world, interesting characters and vivid imagery of layered cultures and landscapes, exciting action, political intrigue, and mutants. I love, love, love this book. It's the best sci-fi I've read in a really long time. The story is complicated, so it's difficult to give a simple summary, but it's not too confusing when you're reading it. There are only women in this universe, and I found it interesting that it's neither mentioned nor explained in the book. There's a system of living planets around an artificial star, and these world ships are decaying and dying, causing the millions of people who live on them to be at risk. A big arc of the story is about one of these worlds finding a way to travel beyond the system and break away from the star to save themselves by traveling to somewhere new. There are two points of view, Zan and Jade, who are former lovers and sometimes enemies, but they need to work together to save everybody. Along the way, Zan travels deep into the bowels of one of these living planets, where she finds a whole civilization, hordes of mutants, strange fungal forests, and has bizarre encounters while also discovering her found family. There are so many creative and interesting ideas in this story and well-written characters that I can't describe it all here. One of the things in this book that was really interesting was this concept of women birthing the components to sustain the stations. These world ships have biological parts as well as mechanical parts. And the women's bodies are kind of overtaken by the station and they become pregnant and they birth the parts that are needed to repair or to build new parts of the station. It's a very interesting concept and I've never heard anything like that before. One small criticism of this book is the intersectionality is lacking. Everybody is a female with a womb in this particular book. So there was definitely queer representation as all the relationships were lesbian or sapphic, but there wasn't much representation for other types of queer people or people who are non-binary or gender fluid. 
I 1000% recommend this book to anyone who enjoys sci-fi, political intrigue, bizarre worlds and cultures, and rumination on the destructiveness of war and obsession. My favorite quote from the Stars or Legion is, the secret to leadership is not to be a particularly intelligent person. It is to surround oneself with those far smarter than oneself and try not to kill them. And that's my reading wrap up for the month of February. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really loving sharing my reading with all of you. If you want to see more book reviews and book content, as well as journaling content, follow me on my Instagram at biblio underscore creep or on any other social media, it's the same handle. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you'd like to join me again, my next two videos to come out will be my April setups for my reading journal and for my planner. Have a great month, have a great week, drink water, take care of yourself, and I'll see you next time. Bye.